as Zimbabwe embarks on a significant step towards economic recovery by compensating displaced white and black farmers who lost their land during the controversial land seizures of the early 2000s. Critical questions arise about the broader economic, social, and political implications of this move. The Zimbabwean government's initial $20 million payout, part of its 2024 budget, signals an effort to restore the once thriving agricultural sector and rebuild international relations. So in this conversation we'll be having now, an economist uh, that we've seen have shared some insights into the potential impacts of the compensation plan on Zimbabwe's economy, foreign debts, and of course, efforts to re-engage with global financial institutions. And to help us uh, discuss this further and give an insight into this, I have Dr. Prosper Chitambara, a developmental economist. Dr. Chitambara, thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you so much for having me. So I would like to begin this way. Uh, can you give us an overview of the economic and diplomatic costs uh, Zimbabwe has faced as a result of the land invasions? Well, yeah, it's, um, it has affected our uh, agricultural uh, sector largely, but of course the rest of the economy. Uh, Zimbabwe still remains an agro-based economy. So the onset of the land reform program uh, was uh, associated with a significant reduction in production in agriculture, but also overall productivity uh, within the sector and uh, across uh, the rest of the economy. Um, and uh, Zimbabwe currently, we are having to import. We are a, a net food importer. We used to be a, a net food exporter. Uh, but of course, we are now trying to rebuild the sector and correcting some of the mistakes uh, that we have made uh, in the past. Uh, so I think that process, uh, I say, I think is going on well, but th there's still a lot of work uh, that we need to do, uh, including uh, bringing a finality to the land reform exercise or program by compensating uh, the former white farmers. Uh, the total package, the total bill is around uh, $3.5 billion. So we have to mobilize $3.5 billion US dollars for the compensation of, uh, of the farmers, that uh, of the former white farmers, yeah, of the white farmers. Yeah, okay, so we are, we are invariably looking at over about $25 million in terms of payment uh, in compensation to displaced farmers. How effective will this be? And do you think this will contribute meaningfully to restoring um, Zimbabwe's farming sector and its broader economic re uh, revival? But I think this is just a, a token payment, uh, 25, 20 or 25 million out of a, a total bill of 3.5 billion. Uh, I think there's still a long way uh, to go. But of course, over and above that, I think what we also need to do uh, is to enhance our mechanization and as well as our irrigation capacity uh, within the sector. Uh, Zimbabwe has been one of the worst affected countries uh, by a drought uh, by climate induced shocks and disasters uh, we are we are currently undergoing a drought which has seen a massive uh, reduction in production of key crops for example maize maize has gone down this year this season by almost 80 uh, percent and, and other sub sectors within agriculture but uh, what, what we need to be focusing and emphasizing more i think going forward is how do we build uh, the resilience uh, and how do we climate proof the sector and uh, the rest of the economy mm -hmm. and irrigation and mechanization are very very important uh, in, the, in that regard so yes compensating for uh, the, the white farmers is good but even over and above that uh, we need to enhance our uh, investments in irrigation our investments in, in the mechanization uh, of the sector. So in terms of our re-engagement, uh, if we are able to uh, pay, pay off this bill, definitely I think that, that that will go a long way in terms of the normalization of relations between Zimbabwe, uh, especially in the West. So I think that's a, an important uh, condition for normalization of relations. Uh, even within the multi-stakeholder dialogue uh, that government has been engaging with uh, the care creditors, I think that's one of the key uh, areas that the government must actually um, uh, implement and, uh, and, and work on uh, for, the, for there to be full uh, re-engagement uh, with uh, international partners. Uh, okay, so you actually commended the government for this um, initiative, but then what impact will the um, compensation plan have on Zimbabwe's fiscal budgets? 
and because we know that it's equally servicing debt and we're looking at billions yes, of dollars yet to be paid and a lot of people are still questioning the possibility of the government sustaining um, these payments when it still has other financial <coughs> encumbrances. Uh, of course, we're looking at a portfolio, uh, a fiscal portfolio that is hugely impacted by these spendings. So, um, I mean, yes, what's sir. your feel as regards this? And first, first and foremost, I don't think uh, we have the capacity to be able to sustain uh, these payments. Um, but also, more, more importantly, uh, there, there's a huge uh, crowding out effect uh, in terms of uh, spending on other critical sectors, uh, such as in infrastructure, such as social protection, uh, even education and the health. Uh, so I think that's the challenge that we actually find ourselves in. Uh, on the one hand, we want to quickly uh, normalize our relations uh, with, with the West. But uh, on the other end, we actually don't have the financial way with our, or the financial capacity to be able to make a significant debt on, on this huge uh, debt overhang uh, that, that we actually have. So uh, it's, 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 a, it's a very tricky situation. It's a very difficult situation. Uh, even when we look at our total external debt stock of almost about 13 billion US dollars, 80% of that are actually areas, which actually means that we are in debt distress and we are failing to, to service our debt. And, and it's, it's really difficult given uh, the growth, the trends in growth uh, that, that we have actually been uh, experiencing uh, over the past few years, uh, very low growth, erratic and, and anemic growth. And unless and until our economy grows uh, fast enough and more sustainably, the World Bank has uh, indicated that our economy must grow by at least 15% uh, every year if we are to make significant progress towards uh, the vision 2030 of becoming an upper middle income economy uh, by, by 2030. So uh, it's not going to be very easy, uh, but at least we have started, uh, we, we are starting uh, from somewhere, but uh, sustaining that, uh, I think it's going to be very difficult, especially if our economy does not grow uh, fast enough. Uh, okay, well, another area that seems not to be easy is satisfying the parties involved. Uh, we're talking about the white farmers and the black farmers. Now, uh, let's even look at what actually brought us to this point. We're looking at um, these lands that were originally uh, said to have belonged to the blacks uh, that were forcibly taken by the uh, colonialists and the former president, Robert Mugabe, um, took these lands back from the white commercial farmers, gave them back, uh, a, 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 of course, let's say a significant portion back to the black farmers. Uh, but then we are now seeing a compensation being paid and a lot of talks have gone into the buyers in terms of allocation, what has been given to the white farmers and what is going to the black farmers. Uh, would you say that there's a bit of parity in terms of what has been disbursed so far, or you would say that um, it's, it's skewed uh, along some certain sentiments or lines? Yeah, no, you're actually right that uh, obviously it's skewed. Uh, we, we, we haven't seen a very significant investments, uh, independent support, uh, to to the to the farmers yes government has been trying uh, given the fiscal constraints obviously but i think uh, we will need to do more uh, to enhance uh, the uh, capacity of our farmers to be able to produce uh, especially uh, in drought years so zimbabwe is very prone uh, but the last few years we actually very, we've been very prone uh, to droughts so government is to come on board and um, assist the farmers in terms of uh, climate proofing um, uh, the whole sector, uh, uh, so to speak. And obviously that requires uh, a lot of resources to be able to, to do that. Mm -hmm. So I think the idea really is to try to uh, come up with a fine, uh, fine balance between, on the one hand, having to compensate uh, former white farmers, but also on the other end, uh, providing uh, support to the current farmers to be able to be more productive and uh, and more competitive. Uh, I think that's the, it's it's a real challenge, and, and uh, coming up with that balance, uh, obviously, it's going to be uh, quite difficult. I think, in my view. Uh, I understand. Uh, so uh, earlier on, you talked about um, the relationship that Zimbabwe has with its foreign partners and the need to sustain that bond. So um, to what extent can this particular restoration and the compensation that has been paid now uh, strengthen the ties uh, with Western governments in terms of the help that Zimbabwe needs uh, to resolve its foreign debts and, of course, uh, revive its economy? 
I think one, one, one positive impact that will be brought about uh, on account of the compensation will be the, the, the reduction uh, in terms of the, the, the political risk uh, premium. So Zimbabwe uh, is a high risk premium, and this is actually even making it more difficult for us uh, to be able to attract more capital inflows and more foreign direct investment inflows, especially from the Western uh, nations. So once this issue, uh, or once we've started making significant progress towards the resolution of this issue, uh, that, that we have a positive impact in terms of our high risk, which should help in terms of unlocking more capital uh, inflows as well as more foreign direct in, uh, investments uh, into uh, into Zimbabwe. Hmm. Uh, all right, so and we are aware that um, an IMF team will be in Harare uh, as announced by the finance minister, pretty soon, until he could be, he made that statement. So um, you've talked about the possibilities of um, uh, Zimbabwe fighting and headwind this. Um, so what are the chances now for the country to secure uh, the much-anticipated IMF staff monitored program during the upcoming visit, and how crucial will that be uh, for the country's economy mm -hmm. in terms of recovery plans? Yeah, no, I think that's very crucial. And in fact, I think the visit by the IMF team really seeks to uh, come to an understanding and agree and an agreement uh, with, with government on the modalities uh, of the staff monitored program. So in terms of our re-engagement uh, and in terms of our areas clearance, uh, I think that's an important uh, benchmark. Uh, so part of the macroeconomic reform agenda that government has agreed to with uh, creditors and international partners is uh, to enter into a staff monitored program uh, with the National Mandate Fund. And of course, the fund will also provide uh, technical assistance uh, on the macroeconomic reform uh, agenda or front. And, and I think that's also critical in terms of our, our, our re-engagement uh, because of the critical role that uh, the National Mandate Fund actually plays. Currently, we are not yet uh, eligible to receive financial assistance or support uh, from multilateral financial institutions. But I think uh, a staff funded program, in my view, is an important step in terms of uh, the full normalization of relations with uh, multilateral institutions, uh, creditors, and other international partners. Mm. Uh, we see a Zimbabwean government is trying as much as possible to keep everybody happy and facilitate understanding mm. uh, among the um, domestic players and the foreign players, and we hope that they'll be able to get this right, most especially uh, for the economy that has been hit by uh, so many um, internal and external forces. Uh, we hope they'll be able to do good with that. Uh, Dr. Prosper Chitambara, developmental economist, uh, economist rather, uh, thank you so much for your time. It was nice talking to you. Thank you so much.